So, as I said, we are already almost done. So, we are now going to talk about computing the gradients with respect to the parameters. So, where are we? We finished this part, then we finished this part. We do not care how many hidden layers are there, we will just keep applying the same formula again and again. So, we are done with this very nasty part which could have uh, repetitions that there, are, there could be many hidden layers and now we are finally ready to compute this ok. So, let us go there ok. Uh, so, let us look at that right. So, what do we want now? We want the derivative of the loss function with respect to one of the weight matrices right w k and I want this to be again generic I do not it should not the formula I need not have to recompute the formula for w1, w2, w3 I should just be able to do it for a generic uh, w k right that is what I am interested in and again my recipe is going to be the same instead of computing this uh, gradient at one go right. So, this is the derivative of a scalar with respect to a matrix. So, this is again uh, going to be a uh, matrix, but instead of computing all the elements the entire matrix at one go I am first going to compute the derivative of one of the elements of this matrix right. So, what I am going to do is I just uh, ignore this part for now. I am going to oh let it be ok. I am going to compute the derivative of the loss function uh, with respect to one element of the matrix. So, that could be say w k i j right. So, this matrix has n cross n or n 1 cross n 2 entries. So, I am going to focus on computing the derivative with respect to one of these entries right. And now, let me just link it to the uh, diagram that I have. Suppose, this is the uh, entry that I am looking for which in this case tragically happens to be w 2 2 right. So, it is the yeah it is the weight connecting the second neuron in this layer to the second neuron in this layer. So, it is uh, the 2 comma 2 entry of the w 2 matrix right. So, that is what that is and what have I done so far right. So, far I have done derivatives up to this point right. I have already done the derivative of the loss function with respect to every element of this layer right. And now, I see that the weight is only connected to one of the guys here right. So, that guy may be a to 2 right. The weight is only connected to that. So, now I am going to exploit this fact right. So, if I want to compute. Yeah. So, I want the derivative of the loss function with respect to one of the entries in the matrix and now I can again split it into two parts right. So, let us see I already know the derivative of the loss function with respect to this guy right which is uh, a k i right. This is the ith neuron in the kth layer. I already know the derivative of the loss function with respect to that and so I can find the derivative of the loss function with respect to a k i. I already have some formula for that from the previous lectures and then the derivative of a k i with respect to w k i j right. Now, this how do I compute this is the question and this is again going to be very uh, straightforward. So, let us see what that is. It just turns out to be h k i j right. So, let us see why that is the case ok. So, now uh, let us see a k again I will take a simple case of a two cross. Uh, so, suppose there are only two neurons here or maybe let us take all the three neurons ok fine. And now this so this is the a k vector I am going to just ignore b k I am just going to write it at the end somewhere. Now, this is my w matrix. So, this is w k 1 1 uh, this is going to be w k 1 3 uh, <coughs> this is w k 2 1 I am just going to write the second row completely w k 2 3 ok. And this multiplied by h k minus 1 which is just going to be h uh, <coughs> k minus 1 in this case. Uh, so, I, I had taken certain values right. So, ok let me just write it as uh, k in this case was 2 right k was equal to 2. Uh, <coughs> so, my uh, h k minus 1 is going to be h 1 uh, 1 h 1 2 h 1 3 right and plus I have the b vector which is going to be I will ignore the b vector right because you will see that it does not show up in the formula. Right. Now, this a k 2 how do I get a k 2 I get it by multiplying this 
by this, right? So if I open that up, it's going to be WK21 into H11 plus WK22 into H12 plus WK23 into H23 and plus there would be this bias term, right? Which would be B. <coughs> k2 in this case okay so that's that's what it is going to be and now i'm taking the derivative of this quantity with respect to uh, one of the weights right so what is the weight that i am looking at i am looking at wkij in which this case that wkij is wk22 so all of these other terms are going to disappear right that's why i said the bias won't matter in fact more terms won't matter and the derivative of this quantity with respect to wk2 is just going to be h12 right and now let's understand what is uh, uh, h what is this what are these indices 1 and 2 here so this was just the <coughs> uh, i and j right so that's what this 1 and 2 are so i was trying to take the derivative of uh, a sorry i was trying to take the derivative of a k2 with respect to w k this was the guy right so this was again 2 2 <coughs> and my the answer which i got was h 1 2 in this case right so this is actually i minus 1 and this is j so that's what our formula is going to be right so let me just delete all of this and show you the formula it's going to be uh, Okay, k minus 1, sorry, that was k minus 1. So, I got h 1, 2. So, this 1 is for the previous layer. So, it's k minus 1 and the jth neuron in that layer. So, uh, j. Right? So, that's how I got this answer. So, we just did that derivative. I'm sorry, I made some mistakes there. But if you go back and look at it, I think it should be fine. So, uh, we got this as the answer. So, this is the derivative of the loss function with one element of the weight matrix wk, right. So, if I look at the derivative of the loss function with respect to the entire matrix, then it is going to be a collection of these entries and for any guy here, I now have the formula. So I can just substitute those formulae, right. So, that is what I am going to do now and I am going to do that for this simple case when wk is 3 cross 3 matrix, right. So, the derivative of the loss function with respect to wk is going to be a partial collection of the partial derivatives with respect to all elements of wk and there are 9 such elements, okay. And the formula for any such guy was this. So, now I am going to substitute this formula to get this matrix, right. So, what is this? I am going to just substitute the right values of k and i. So, this is going to be derivative of k1 <coughs> and then this is going to be k minus 1, 1. This is the formula that we had uh, computed on the previous slide, right. This was h of k minus 1 comma j. I am just going to substitute the values of i and j, right. So, this is of k and j. So, this is j and you already know k. So, this is what I get, right. So, this uh, I have just substituted everything from the previous slide onto this slide, okay. Now, let us look at notice something about this matrix, right. So, all the guys in this column, all the terms that are getting multiplied are the same. Same for the next column, all of these guys are the same, Next for same for the next column. The other interesting thing is that across the rows, the entries are the same, right. These three guys are the same, these three guys are the same and these three guys are the same, right. So, if I were to take, so if I were to take two vectors, right, a1, a2, a3 multiplied by b1, b2, b3, right. So, this is known as the outer product of two vectors. This is a 3 cross 1 vector multiplied by a 1 cross 3 vector. So, the product is going to be a 3 cross 3 matrix, right. So, let us look at what do the entries in the matrix look like. The entries in the matrix would look something like this. It would be a1 into b1, a1 into b2, a1 into b3, okay. And then uh, <coughs> a2 into b1, a2 into b2, a2 into b3 and then a3 into b1, a3 into b2, 
A3 into B3, right. So, you have the same situation that you have uh, here, right. If you compare, all these guys were the same, again all of these are B1s, all these guys were the same, all of these are B2s, all these guys were the same, all of these are B3s, right. And similarly, all these three guys are the same, just as these three guys were the same and so on, right. So, what I am trying to say is that this matrix here can actually be written as the outer product of two vectors and what are those two vectors? This is one vector, right. So, this will be your B vector and uh, this will form your A vector, right. So, that is how I am going to write it now, the outer product between these two vectors. So, this is what it is going to look like. This is the A vector and this is the B vector, the transpose of it, right, because that was the sleeping vector and the A vector was the standing vector, right. So, now you have a formula for the derivative of the loss function with respect to k and what do you need for that? You need two quantities. One is the derivative of the loss function with respect to a k that we have already done in the previous lecture. So, I can compute this. The other is the activation at the k minus 1th layer and that you anyways compute in the forward pass, right. So, you compute, you start with the input you do the first transformation to that which is w x plus b, then you get the first activation layer, pre-activation layer, then you apply the activation on that to get the activation layer. So, this is, does not require any derivatives, any computations, right? this is just the forward pass and you know how to compute every element in the network during the forward pass. So, this does not have a gradient associated, this is not some derivative, it's just h k minus 1 which is the activation at the k minus 1 at layer, so that you already have. So, both these quantities you have. So, you now know how to compute the derivative of the loss function with respect to w k, ok. Now, going to the last part which is find the biases. So, you want to compute the derivative of the loss function with respect to bias, again the same uh, idea. So, if I look at uh, this bias, ok, then this is connected to this activation, uh, pre-activation here and I know what the formula for computing that pre-activation was. So, now if I want to take the derivative of the loss function with respect to one of the uh, elements of the bias vector, then I can split it into these two parts. This again I already know how to compute and what is the derivative of a k i with respect to b k i? You can just see from this formula that it is just equal to 1, right. So, this part will disappear and you are just taking the derivative of b k i with respect to b k i which is 1. So, the only thing that you will get is this. So, this is now we can write the gradient vector. So, uh, the derivative of the loss function with respect to the b k vector is just going to be a collection of all these partial derivatives which is just the derivative of the loss function with respect to a k, right. Because each of these entries is just the partial derivative of the loss function with respect to one of the elements of a k. So, collection of all those is just going to be the gradient of the loss function with respect to a k, right. So, we are done, we have done the derivatives of the loss function with respect to the weights and the biases, that is what our eventual goal was, right. Now, we are going to just recap all of this and try to put this into one algorithm in the next video. Thank you.